We're here with Rupert Tappin, MD of Future Fundraising, one of the face-to-face -face companies. Rupert, tell us more about Future Fundraising and the services it provides. Hi, Howard. Sure. Uh, Future Fundraising, uh, we're a project management um, basic consultancy that specialises in face-to-face -face and door-to-door -door fundraising. We've been going for about uh, five or six years now and we specialise in uh, signing people up on the street and on the doorstep to regular giving, direct debits. Um, uh, and we differentiate ourselves in the marketplace by sort of focusing on the quality side of it. So we basically place as much emphasis on uh, acquisition, on um, signing the donors up. We place as much emphasis on that as we do on the retention of the uh, donors as well. So all the clients we currently work with, uh, we basically work uh, um, very uh, as much on the uh, analysis of basically who's paying the charity, who isn't paying the charity, um, and we actually focus on the income coming into the charity as a result of the donors we sign up um, and we help do reporting and training for our clients on that basis. We do sorts of lovely sort of graphs and uh, pie charts and, and just basically uh, you know, analyse what face-to-face door-to-door -door is all about which is getting new people to support charities and basically bottom line donating, you know, giving them the money, donating the money. You focus very much on modelling and statistics and analysis um, and in particular retention. Tell us more about the research you've commissioned on, on retention rates. Yeah, well, it's it's more rather than sort of our research. It's more kind of the, the PFRA type um, we do through the PFRA, the uh, Fundraising Regulatory Association, um, self regulatory of face to face and door to door. Um, that was basically I've been on the board of the PFRA for several for a few years now, uh, and so has Morag Morag Fleming, who's the head of fundraising at Quarries. And I got sat down with Morag and said, okay, right, how do you know? It became evident that the charities wanted some form of benchmarking. You know, if we're going to invest this much money in face-to-face -face, door, we need to be able to show to our investment panel, trustees, whatever, you know, this is the predicted income. We need to be better at modelling that income and better understand the kind of drop-off rates. Because it's, you know, it's cold acquisition. You get cancellation rates, attrition rates from any form of cold acquisition fundraising across the board. Um, but it's about knowing what that might be uh, and how to model it in and, and, and be able to better predict your sort of long-term long -term income and, and return on investment is critical. So, because charities measure attrition in so many different ways, you know, they measure it by, um, some group it by month of signing up, um, some people group it by month of cancellation, that the month they don't cancel, some people group it by um, a percentage expressed of the previous month's donors, so, you know, that kind of, you know, the percentages, you know, it's, it's meaningless because some other charities express all their monthly percentages as a percentage of the total numbers of donors, donors signed up. Really what Morag and I did is said, okay, what's the one thing charities know, they know about who is paying them, who's made payments, and therefore who hasn't. So we asked charities uh, last year, through the PFRA, we asked them to basically tell us how many donors they signed up on the street, on the doorstep in, a, in 2004 and 2006. Uh, and then we said, okay, how many made a payment in month one then? How many made payments in month two? How many of your donors made three payments? That kind of stuff. And then from that, we could work out unequivocally, because all charities know who's paid them and how many payments they've made. Everyone knows that. So we used that data, we subtracted one month from the other month, i.e. we worked out the cancellation rates were by definition of people who didn't make payments. That's so universal, it's comparing apples with apples, perfect comparison there. And we, for the first time last year, we produced this uh, benchmark set of attrition figures, which basically allowed us in, on street and in dual fundraising to say, okay, all the charities that submitted their data, and this is 30 charities, it was 80 campaigns, because it was 2004, 2006, it was Dorip Street. We had over 377,000 donor, individual donors and their, their payment histories. And that's over a third of only people, which was, you know, I think that's, you know, a world first. Yes. Um, and it would just produce some, some brilliant data, brilliant benchmarking data, and now we're starting to look at that. We now can, I can start to compare that year on year, that we'll be going back out um, in March time to everyone that took part, and in fact, anyone that's ever done a face-to-face -face or door-to-door -door fundraising in the past 10 years, we would love them to take part. Uh, to We're going to ask them, very simply again, give us a campaign from 2006, uh, 2007, and potentially 2008, and just based on how many donors did you sign up, if you know it, and how many made one payment, how many made two, how many made three, how many made four. And then we're going to actually have some updated figures and at this year's Institute Fundraising Convention, which is I think it's the 6th, 7th and 8th of July, I think we've got Norag and I doing a presentation on the 6th, of, on the Monday, uh, and we'll be actually um, analysing these. Um, all the charities get anonymised, so no charity is identified by name at all. Um, 
you know, there's no, there's no agencies identified, obviously, either. It's all very much anonymised, but it's about benefiting the sector. Uh, and we'll be, be producing the sort of the latest benchmark attrition figures. Um, and we can, for the first time really ever, see the impact of a recession, the economic climate, on regular giving. Because, of course, the previous recessions, we never had regular giving at this level. It didn't really exist, early 90s, 70s. So, you know, we should be seeing some fascinating findings coming out. Um, additionally, as well, this year, we've actually had um, some further analysis um, conducted by Professor Adrian Sargent. He uh, used to be at the uh, Bristol, UE, uh, Bristol University, and he's now over in the States, Indianapolis. Uh, and basically he did some research of the last year's PFRA attrition survey. Uh, and what we did with him is we got him to look at all the, the attrition rates from the, from the campaigns. But we basically said, okay, here's the attrition rates. And we actually asked the charities to tell us what they did with the donors after they were signed up by the, by the agencies, basically, or, or in-house operations. There may well have been some in-house operations in there. Uh, and then what Adrian then did is he analysed the effect of each independent variable uh, on, on attrition. So when I'm talking about independent variable, I mean things like, what did the charities do? Did they welcome call the donor or not? Did they um, send out a newsletter? If they did send out a newsletter, was it um, customised or was it just a generic um, you know, standard newsletter that all direct mail donors get? Um, did they send out an e-newsletter, e customised or non-customised? Um, did they um, send out like a... a other kind of welcome email. Um, what else? We talked about welcome calling. Um, did they do an upgrade? Uh, ask. If so, did they, when did they do it? Um, those are the key sort of critical. Those are the different differentiators that different charities do with their face-to-face -to -face tools for donors or any DM recruited donor. Uh, and what Adrian could do is he could actually use some fantastic Wizzy Dizzy software, um, and he basically threw out these. He created thousands upon thousands of theoretical models based on that. And he could, for the first time, model out the effect of all these, all these variables on attrition. He actually modeled out the, 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 the significance of each of those independent variables. So how significant was the weapon call? Um, and how significant was the fact that it was customised or non-customised newsletters? And we've already press released, just uh, two or three weeks back, um, the fact that sending customised newsletters out is, it has a, will, have, will give you the best donor loyalty and lowest retention. And also, the, your, your best communicator will be three and eight times per year. You know, if you do it none, once or twice, so the good old myth that you know, don't communicate with your regular email donors because you will remind them and they'll, they'll think, oh, no one's doing that, I'll cancel it. That myth has once and for all been blown out of the water, and it's the first time that, you know, it's kind of common sense, but I think it's the first time we've ever had, we've ever had physical hard evidence in terms of people that are paying or didn't pay charities and what those charities did and, and, and what kind of influences that had on, on, on attrition. So, Morgan, I'll be having, will be, Adrian's report had some fascinating findings on the impact of upgrade calling, which have a significant effect on attrition. Um, also, the impact, effect of the welcome calling, which has an effect on a certain part of the, um, the, 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 the time frame that a donor, that a donor sort of gives to a charity, um, you know, and, um, and various other sort of impacts of other data. We'll, Morgan and I will be releasing more of that um, findings from Adrian's absolutely fascinating report at the Institute for Fundraising Convention in, uh, in July as well. Thank you, Rupert. Where can we find out more about future fundraising and all this research? Uh, well, the, basically uh, our website is uh, www.futurefundraising.co.uk um, and in terms of the ongoing research, um, anyone is more than welcome to email me if they want to, or, or Mick Aldridge, Chief Executive of PFRA, or Mariah Fleming, uh, welcome to email me, um, rupert t at futurefundraising.co.uk for a copy of the presentation we gave last year uh, and we'll be press releasing the, um, the, uh, the, the updated pre for attrition survey so we'd love as many of your um, you know, charity, uh, charities that sort of view, view your site, we'd love as many of them to take part um, in, in submitting their data for, um, so, we can get, so we can really improve this benchmarking on, on attrition and, and help charities to basically plan for the future for robust income from, from the face-to-face -face and door-to-door medium. Rupert Tappin, thank you very much. Thank you.